Hello, everyone, and here playing Farming Simulator 22 on Frank and Muth, Michigan here. We're still working on mulching up. Uh, let's see, this is actually the Sunflower field here. We got the uh, Kubota M7. 152 working on this job here. I went, hey, had to find something for the uh, Kubota tractors to do, right? I went, you know, unfortunately, most of the Kubota tractors, they're a little bit smaller. And uh, as I've said before, I went, at least around where I live, you just don't see any uh, farmers using Kubota equipment. Pretty much just, you know, the little uh, around the house type things. That's what you see the uh, the Kubota tractors being used for. And uh, we'll have to say they're obviously very popular for that use. So, anyway, got uh, course play working on this one. Uh, unfortunately, here between episodes, the hired worker I had going on field 11, well, as you can see, I one, uh, he did some strange things. I don't know what he was doing and smoking, but yeah, well, as I've said before, I'm in the, the narrow distance here between these fields not good for the hired workers definitely definitely not good um anyway speaking of the hired worker i've got him sitting here well he's not hired at the moment but i've got him sitting here waiting to go i'm gonna run the high speed disc across this field as well once he's done mulching i think he's actually almost done i think he's working his way this way so let's see what's our mulch if we turn off the rolling i think yeah there we go so, uh, unfortunately once the uh, high speed disc or any sort of cultivation happens on the field plowing you can't, you can't mulch it then, unfortunately. So you can see, uh, even though I'm mulching the field, it's not getting applied, which is kind of too bad of one. So anyway, while that's going, I'm going to hop back over to field 12 of them. We're almost done plowing that. Uh, just about finished with that. We got just a little bit left on this side here to finish yet. So we're going to get some uh, GPS set up here. Oh, I already just turned it off. It was already on. Get some settings loaded here then. So zero degree. Auto with that. Home that on the tractor, and eh, we don't need to be that far over. Move that over just a little bit. There we go. Okay, and we're back in the uh, the plowing business here. As I've said before, I, mean, I think this is probably my uh, favorite new uh, plow here as of late. It's uh, just a, a good classic American chisel plow. And unfortunately... There's not very many of those available that I know of. Um, you folks can correct me if I'm wrong, but I just, there's not, there's just not chisel plows out there, right? I mean, we got lots of other style plows. Um, we have, uh, yeah, this is not really a plow, but I don't know why it's in the plow category. Uh, a turbo plow, it's just the high speed disc is all this is. Um, we got the 26, 20, again, I mean, this is a disc, this is not a plow. Uh, we do have the, uh, the John Deere disc chisel here. This is definitely a chisel plow one. I don't know what model number, it just, it's a John Deere disc chisel, and that's it. Uh, we do have this one. This is more of a ripper here. Again, not really a chisel plow per se. And at least as I understand, everyone, these are kind of designed to be able to do tillage in one pass. Uh, I'm not sure how well that actually works in theory, but uh, this is a combination disc. Different than what we have with our chisel plow, everyone. Uh, the chisel plow, speaking of chisel plow, I should probably go check and see what we're at here. Yeah, we're almost to the end. The chisel plow one, it looks like it might have discs on the front. These are not discs on the front, everyone. As I've said before, uh, these are coulters. And yes, Evan, they are spinning the wrong way. I don't know about you folks. Actually, you know what? We can fix that if we get out. And we do... I probably should repair... Well, the repair actually isn't too bad. Repaint. Fortunately, it doesn't cost much. Once it's repainted, Evan, then you can't see it. As easily. Okay, let me let me cry. As easily, you can't see it, Evan. Really annoying once you see it, Evan, that they're going backwards. Yeah, anyway... Oh, that was not the right one. So yeah, going back to this here again, everyone. Like I said, that's uh, got actual discs on the front. The, the discs, everyone, they're concaved, and they're designed... Well, they're also angled, and they're also designed to, like, throw the dirt. They're designed to pick the dirt up and turn it over and throw it, right? Versus the Coulters here, everyone, they're designed simply just... They're straight. They're in row, right? They're designed simply to just cut the soil, everyone. Simply cut the soil in front of the uh, chisel plow. Oh, did I? Oh, there we go. Push the in cab instead of raise. Let's actually raise that up here a minute. Line them back up. Lock on the GPS and we're back in business. By the way, hope everyone had a uh, great and uh, safe 4th of July here, everyone. Actually, uh, recording this here on the uh, the 4th. And at least uh, for my family, we uh, blew off some fireworks here over the uh, weekend. 
this uh, past Saturday. In fact, had a good time doing that. Still have got all uh, nine and a half digits accounted for. But I think we're pretty good. Actually, uh, speaking of this uh, Case Quad track, everyone, I uh, went to one of the local 4th of July parades, and they actually had one of these. Actually, no, I think they had two of these. They had two of these in the uh, the local parade. The one, I think, was like a 580, and I'm not sure. I don't remember what the size of the other one was, everyone. It might have actually been a 620, if I remember correctly. But, yeah, they actually had a couple of these uh, big red Case IH Quad tracks in it. They also had the John Deere, too, by the way. For those of you who maybe never had the opportunity to uh, get up and close and personal uh, with some of this agricultural equipment, uh, the newer, larger tractors, I've got to say I'm one, and I've said this many times before, this game does not do justice to the size of this equipment. Or, like, maybe you have seen the equipment, everyone, but you've seen it at a distance. You know, maybe it's out in the field or you have know, driven past a dealership or something like that, and, you know, they got the tractors lined out in front of everyone. Unless you actually go and like stand in front of this piece of equipment, I want to just, yeah, it, it doesn't do it justice on, on the size and the scale of some of this stuff. A little slow on the lowering on this particular plow here. There we go. Uh, anyway, going back to the plows, everyone. Again, talking about the chisel plows here. So this is, a, again, everyone, a ripper. This is not a chisel plow. This is actually, again, more of a ripper. Everyone, this is designed for, like, deep ripping, I'm assuming. At least that's what it looks like it's for, anyway. This is designed to go down deep and break up the hard pan. Uh, another one similar to the other uh, ripper we looked at earlier. I mean, this one has discs on it and then chisel points, essentially, rippers. And then just like a Harrow rolling basket on the back there. Uh, there's the one we're actually using. Having the Landall 2131 chisel plow. Not entirely sure what these are supposed to be. I, mean, I, I don't really know. It's a Lizard SM70. I, I don't know. I mean, don't know. It's 22 meters wide. Wow. I don't think that's anything realistic. I, mean, I don't know what these are exactly supposed to be. But another moldboard plow. And this I'm going to Will Rich. Oh, that's uh, that was a bit weird going on there. I'm not sure what was up with that. Uh, Will Rich 2530. I'm guessing this looks more like a cultivator, Evan. I don't know, you folks can let me know in the comments, but I'm pretty sure this is a cultivator. Uh, again, a lot of modders, Evan, like to put cultivators in the plow category. For one thing, Evan, cultivators tend to be much larger than chisel plows. Uh, chisel plows, Evan, are designed for your primary tillage. Uh, so one, Evan, the ground is typically harder because you're first breaking it up. So it's been, you know, sitting for maybe a while, and, you know, planted your crop in the spring and then the dirt's been sitting all summer long with the crop growing in it now you're coming back in either that fall or maybe next spring so it's been a whole year and that ground just been sitting there getting hard right Evan so one it's hard to pull through in the first place and then typically your chisel plows I mean, are also going quite a bit deeper as well they're really they're going deep and uh, ripping that soil versus a cultivator's I mean, they're designed to just kind of come through break it up a little bit they're not going very deep, a couple inches, a few inches usually maybe. And they're just kind of there to kind of level it off, smooth it out. Let's make a nice, uh, good seed bed. And uh, by the way, once we're uh, done with this episode here, uh, I'm hoping we'll be all uh, finished with the uh, fall tillage here at this point. So if we go look at our map here, uh, this is the last of the plowing that needs to be done. So just a little bit on field 12, if I'm not mistaken here. Let's turn the weeds off just so we can see this here. So yeah, field 4 should be all set. Uh, finished up with the lime on field 9, everyone. So that should be all set as well. Speaking of being all set, looks like the mulcher is almost done over there. Uh, yeah, we're all set over there. Those fields, I, yeah, like I said, we should be pretty good here. Uh, we might have to maybe just take a quick peek around again for like lime and stuff, but... 
And, and like I was saying um, earlier, Evan, I thought for sure we had some fields that needed lime, Evan, but now that I'm like going around and trying to look, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm a bit confused by this, Evan. I thought we had some fields that needed lime. Back when I was harvesting, I thought we'd seen some lime deficiencies, but I, I don't know, Evan. I don't know. I'm not seeing that now, unfortunately, so... Oh, speaking of our environmental scores here, just kind of curious. 100 on that field, that one. 100 on that field. 75 on this one. 88 on that one. 74 on that one. 84 on that one. Uh, 42 here is a low one. That's uh, the main reason I was we're just not harvesting that field, so I'm not sure what to do about that. Uh, I think... Yeah, because we got... Yeah, we got buildings on that one, so I don't know what you do about that one. I think that feels just kind of a wash, unfortunately. It's probably not helping our score none, but oh well. What are you supposed to do, I won? I guess we could throw some crop on it. Actually, that's, uh, you know, maybe, I wonder if you're looking for, like, the, the best environmental score. When you first buy a field, even though you don't want to use it for a field, maybe, like, you know, the first time around, I mean, you should probably, like, actually use it for a field, get the environmental score up, and then, uh, I don't know if it'll stay up, though, and I have no idea how that works. Also, I'm going to say, when I'm not going to complain about the environmental score we have at the moment here. Um, we're sitting at 88. That's uh, that's pretty decent, if you ask me. I think weed control and tillage are like our two lower numbers here at this point. Um, I don't know why the weed control is necessarily so low, Evan, because <laughs> I don't know about you folks, but I think we're doing pretty good on the weeds. I think uh, Giants maybe just needs to uh, get in and uh, tweak their numbers a little bit more. Oh, uh, let's see once I'm going to load up some uh, comments here a moment. Also, while we're loading up some comments, Evan, uh, don't forget, if you're not already uh, subscribed to the channel, make sure you click that uh, subscribe button and uh, stay tuned for the next uh, map, by the way, too, Evan. I'm hoping that one's going to be a really uh, fun one. I'm looking forward to it, hopefully. So, mm, should we? No, nah, I think we'll, we'll save any more hints on that for now, Evan. I, for those of you who uh, kind of know your maps, I think I've pretty much given away as to which map I'm hoping to go to next. Uh, not a guarantee, of course, by the way. I wanted just, just to be clear on that, but uh, it's the one I'm hoping and planning on going to. We'll see once if it happens or not, but like I said, for those of you good with your maps, you'll know which map I'm going to next, hopefully. And uh, yes, I'm hoping it'll be a fun one, everyone. Uh, it's going to be a little bit of probably a departure from farming. In fact, I don't know if we'll be doing any farm or not, and I, I really don't know, to be honest. We'll just have to see once what's on it and go from there, I guess. But yeah, once you're uh, also subscribed, everyone, don't forget to click that uh, bell notification. That way you get notified of the latest, greatest R.D. Allen video. Also down in the uh, description, everyone, if you'd like to follow me over on uh, Facebook and Instagram, uh, you're welcome to do that as well. And uh, something I maybe don't mention as often, everyone, but for those who maybe uh, enjoy watching the channel and uh, want to help support it further, um, I do have Patreon as well. I don't really advertise that one, everyone. Uh, as I've said before, everyone, just watch the ads. I'm good with that. But uh, like I said, for those of you who maybe don't want to watch the ads or you just like really like the RDL and videos for some reason, I'll, I'll make some phone calls for you. We'll get you help or something. <laughs> no, if you really like the videos, have one. Well, uh, yeah, there, like I said, there is Patreon down below as well if you'd like to help support that way. Always, as again, as I've said before, I want to very much appreciate it, uh, especially to all those that uh, watch the videos, help support the channel, comment, subscribe. As I've said many times before, Evan, uh, as we uh, hopefully get into some comments here, I always enjoy reading you folks' comments. And I will have to say, Evan, at least uh, going through the comments I usually get, I think I've got some of the uh, the best commenters out there on the, uh, the Farming Sim channels, if I do say so myself. Okay, speaking of comments, let's go ahead and read a few here a minute. Uh, Jay Murphy was saying, enjoying the series, just trying to get caught up. See and spray is a John Deere option for sprayers. I'm guessing that's why you only see it on the pull type sprayer. That would actually make sense there now that uh, Jay Murphy says that. Yeah, see and spray, yeah, that's probably a John Deere only. The, the name for it anyway, probably everyone is uh, a John Deere technology, right? I would have to imagine some of the other sprayer manufacturers probably have their own 
whatever they might call it as well, I would assume, right? That being said, it's too bad we don't have any uh, self-propelled sprayers that have that option or uh, that manufacturer's version of that option, right? Uh, Pando is saying, great series. You just need a white tractor to celebrate the day. A white tractor, huh? Oh, boy. I don't know if I actually have any white tractors or not. I don't know if we do or not. Actually, let's go to brands. That's probably the easiest way. We go down to white. Uh, white farm equipment. Oh, we actually do have a white. We got a white field boss series three. Okay, but well, I do actually have a white tractor. I'm kind of surprised by that. For those of you maybe not uh, familiar with white tractors, everyone, uh, it was initially Oliver Tractors, everyone, then the white, I believe it was a trucking company, white trucking company bought out Oliver, and then what was Oliver Tractors became white tractors. And then, of course, uh, white and their uh, poor mismanagement, essentially, I mean, pretty much uh, drove both companies in the ground, and, of course, neither one of them exists now. If it wasn't for what I believe uh, was a hostile takeover on the white trucking company's part of Oliver, but Oliver would probably still be around to this day, but alas, they are not, so. Uh, Moses was saying, great video, happy Independence Day, and yes, as I said earlier, Evan, hope Evan had a great 4th of July. Stay safe and uh, maybe enjoy some fireworks, or if you're not into that, well, just enjoy yourself a nice day off. Ah, Keith was saying, seeing all those orange import tractors kind of has my stomach feeling green. I guess the cure is more red. Whoa, more red track. Whoa, whoa, I, don't, I think you had it right on the green part there, Keith. More green tractors. See, stomach feeling green. You need green tractors to fix that. That's, uh, yeah, I know. Sorry to all my viewers having to watch this red tractor on the screen. Uh, uh, what are you going to do, Evan? What are you going to do? Hetro is saying, Happy Independence Day. Long may it last. Yes, thank you there, Hetro. Actually, uh, wait, Hetro, aren't you, uh... Uh, was it UK? I thought you were UK. Maybe not. You'll have to let me know. Christopher was saying, Good morning and good video. Maybe I'm getting Hetro... Uh, just going back to Hetro's comment here. Maybe I'm getting mixed up with another uh, one of my viewers. Uh, anyway, going back to Christopher, he was saying good morning, good video. Happy Independence Day. Yes, thank you very much for that there, Christopher. Go check and see what's how that mulcher is doing here a minute once we uh, get locked back on. Yeah, we should be good. Go back to this screen. Hey, he is done. Excellent. I you know what? I think what I'm going to do, I have one. Let's go get the mulcher off the field here a minute. Go ahead and unload that course. And I think we're just going to throw course play on this uh, mulching job. Well, not mulching. High-speed disking job. Let's get a course play course going for this. So no course. Let's go to that. Uh, oh, probably let's do three headlands. That seems like that should be sufficient. Generate the course. Oh, and good. It just got this field. Excellent. First waypoint. Drive the course. Okay, we'll take the Kubota back to the farm here. And like I was saying, I think that's going to be about all the field work we're going to do here. We're going to finish up the high-speed disking on the sunflower field, which I'll try to finish that between episodes. Should have no problem doing that, I think. And then uh, finish up the plowing on the field we're working on there, which we're almost done, everyone. Think of it, too. I might run the plow across this weedy mess here, everyone. Or maybe we'll just, like, paint over it, too. Maybe that, that may be a better option. Just do something with it, everyone. Oh, look at that beauty sitting in the front yard. Mm. 
Ain't that pretty. Whoa, I'll, <laughs> whoops. That was, uh, that was completely unintentional. I wasn't, um, too busy admiring the, uh, the green combine. Okay, I'm kind of running out of spots to park all my equipment here. Ah, don't you hate it when that happens, Owen? Oh, well. Okay, back to plowing. Right, back to this map so I can click on the track. There we go. I told you, folks, one of these days. We'll get it. Oh, and this... Okay, John left another comment here. Uh... It's in the purchase menu. Uh, right shift plus P, bring up the menu, then click on the factory, rename them. Ah, you know what? Let's, let's actually try that. So left shift P. Um, let's see what's here. We should be able to go over here. And he says if we click on them, we should be able to rename them. Let's try that. Ah, yes, we can. Excellent. So, Scroffy's factory one. Okay, I want to have a space in there if I can. There we go. I like that. Excellent. Two. That way we know which one's which. I went at least on the map here. And do three. I keep uh, forgetting about that. I know someone mentioned that here. Oh, it was an episode or two back. I mean, I was going to do this and then I completely forgot about it. Up to four. And these over here will be five and six. There we go. Very, very nice. Uh, by the way, thanks to the folks uh, who commented on this, that you can actually change the uh, names of the factories there. Uh, that, uh, I would say, is very much helpful, especially when, when I'm using auto drive and knowing which factory is which. Now we can actually see, so I should be able to. We go to, I don't know if this updates right away, or yes, it does. It does update right away. So now I can see, okay, you know, factory two, everyone. Like before, when they were all, you know, all Scrofty factories. Okay, which one's which on the map? You can make some guesses, right, everyone? But might not necessarily be right. So, again, thanks for that there, John. Oh, look at that. When the GPS actually lines up. Which would make sense, because we started off the other side of the field with GPS. And it didn't line up on that side of the field, so that would make sense. Ah, oh, don't you folks like it when GPS lines up? Oh, it's a beautiful thing. Beautiful. And then, technically, I mean, I had reset it, too, right? So... Good thing I actually moved it over a little bit. Uh, let's see. Uh, Brian was saying the trailer is so close to the truck because it's an American truck and a European trailer. European trucks are cab overs. Uh, so the pin for the fifth wheel sits back further on the trailer. Uh, yeah, we're talking about the trailer. That's actually uh, the one that's sitting right over the oven. The one we use for hauling our produce from our chip factories. And yeah, if you look at that truck, uh, let's, uh, yeah, we got time. I'm going to go over and run over here and take a look at it here real quick. Minute one. And I was kind of asking that like, I don't think this is right for real life. I mean, you folks can correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm thinking that one, this is very, very wrong. Now, the part that confuses me here on this one is, this is an in-game truck, everyone, with an in-game trailer. So, like, this is in-game stuff. I mean, this is not like a, I, like, I've got a modded truck, everyone, and I'm sticking, like, an in-game trailer, or I'm sticking a modded truck with a modded trailer, and I know sometimes when you do that, everyone... Sometimes the attachers, you know, they're not quite right, and you can attach it a little further forward. But no, 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 everyone. This is in-game stuff here, everyone. And that's what it... <laughs> I don't know. But you folks, I'm a little confused by that. And yeah, okay. Per Brian, yeah, he's saying that's an American truck, which, yeah, it's like an American truck with a European trailer, which... I guess, yeah, European... Sure. Box truck. Ronald was saying, I'm from Grand Rapids, Michigan. And well, hey there, Ronald. You're not too far from me here then. Grand Rapids is eh, about a half hour drive away or so. I usually, uh, you know, when people ask me where I live, 
uh, like you know where Grand Rapids is because that's like the uh, one of the biggest cities around where I live everyone so most folks are probably not going to recognize the, uh, the the smaller city where I actually live or some of the other smaller cities that are close to where I live Richard was saying nice to see you use some blue power uh, yeah, well, yeah, Russell, Russell, <clears throat> anyway oh well Yay, and there we go, we are done. That finishes that field. Let's fold this up and we're going home. I think we'll probably just call it an episode too. I mean, that seems like a good spot to call it. What do you folks think? We'll get this uh, folded up, put away. We'll maybe go uh, check and see what's how the blue tractor's doing. Maybe we'll have to go bring a green tractor out to actually you know, like do its job. Oh, this reminds me of one. Uh, as I mentioned earlier in the video here, we went to the uh, 4th of July parade. And I had to uh, chuckle a little bit, everyone. Obviously, we had a red tractor in the parade. However, everyone, and I'm probably going to post these pictures up on my Instagram. Reminder, my Instagram is down below if you folks want to see it. But I'll probably post them up there. Uh, the red tractor, everyone, they were hauling on a trailer. You know, typical for a red tractor. And they probably can barely make, uh, make it under their own power, right? So... They, you know, they had to parade the red tractor in the parade on its own, on a trailer. However, when the, you know, the, the John Deere was under its own power. Yeah, that makes perfect sense if you ask me. I'm gonna, you know, again, the, them red tractors, they just, they, they got no power, you know. You know, the way you can parade them red tractors, you, you're gonna have to put them up on a trailer and uh, drag them along, right? Hey, someone's gotta pick on the red tractors. Okay, let's see if we can uh, squeeze that in there. Oh, yeah, one. That looks good to me. Okay, let's see once all the blue. Uh, no blue tractors. Yeah, I don't think there's any blue tractors in the parade anyway. So, for those of you wondering, at least no big blue tractors anyway. Anyway, on that note, I think with that, we're going to wrap this episode up here. If you folks have any comments or questions, be sure to leave them down below. And as always, thanks for watching, and till next time.